Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today by a couple of my homies, Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for CBS Sports, and Lori Lindsay, former U.S. Women's National Team midfielder. How you doing tonight, folks? Could be better sitting here with you too. So pumped to pumped to chat, see your faces um, late at night on this Tuesday. Yeah. Ah, we're me like, too. Me too. Like, no, I'm happy to be do. here. Happy we're to be like, chatting. We we're like, we should get a virtual hang, a late night hang in uh, with, <laughs> with all of our uh, friends out there joining us. Uh, on today's segment, we're going to be doing a United States Women's National Team versus Uzbekistan recap. We're also going to chat a little bit about CONCACAF W uh, qualifier results because that is going to be here much sooner than than we realized but before we get into all this a quick reminder to follow us on twitter for all news and updates at attacking third we also now have a tiktok and we're also on instagram so you can follow us across all three of those platforms at attacking third for highlights cool graphics and for breaking news and you can also catch us this video on youtube.com slash attacking third we've got a couple of games against uzbekistan to go over in terms of the united states women's <laughs> national team getting in getting in their performances you were coming we're coming to everybody live after another lopsided win, which we'll talk about on uh, on Saturday. They defeated Uzbekistan nine to one, and tonight they defeated Uzbekistan nine to zero in uh, in the great city of Philadelphia. A uh, couple locals, you know, that I'm Woo-hoo. sitting here chatting with. So I think that that gives us a little bit of a next factor to talk about this match. Let's maybe talk a little bit about how it got started. We got to take a look at the lineups a little bit. We saw some rotations. We heard from Vlako Andonovsky and his media availabilities that there was likely going to be rotations for this game. And, of course, I know we were all thankful for it. For the United States, uh, they lined up as followed. They had Aubrey Kingsbury, Sofia Huerta, Alana Cook, Naomi Girma, and Emily Fox, Andy Sullivan, Ashley Sanchez, Rose Lavelle, Sophia Smith, and Katerina Macario, and Mal Pugh to round out their starting 11. A couple changes right away that we noticed. Uh, Kingsbury, Girma, Huerta Sanchez into the fold for to, to try to get uh, you know a full 90 or at least to start and build up through the match in this one. When we're looking at these changes right here, when you saw these four, Lori, what was maybe your reaction to, to seeing some of the rotations? Uh, yeah, I was pretty pumped about the back line because it's something that um, Lisa and I had uh, um, talked about earlier in the week. And especially with Cook and Gurma, uh, I do feel yeah. like Cook is um, – you know, could be leading that back line. Uh, I I really value what she brings. A bit of a, a modern day uh, center back, right? Can do it all, and um, so I appreciated that. I appreciated Gurma getting her uh, first cap, and then Kingsbury as well. I mean, she's been so so mm-hmm. good consistently over the last several years for the Washington Spirit. I think she deserved that cap, and then you know, a little bit. Two other players that I would say that I'm pumped for and excited to see going forward. And we spoke a little bit about Huerta offline before we came on. I, I like Huerta. I, I like what she brings to this U.S. team in terms of her being able to attack or 1v1 defending. And I, I just really hope she continues to, even in some of the, the more challenging games, right, continues to get minutes. And then... Um, we'll talk about the front line in a second, but Sanchez, goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah. Like I listen, I, I am pumped about Ashley Sanchez as well. Like I just think there's not a player like her currently in this league in the NWSL. There's not a player, a midfielder like her um on the US team. I don't think mm-hmm. maybe ever. Um, and I think she's just you know, my I, I guess I'll just take a a step back for a second. My overarching opinion of all of this is that I'm thrilled for these players to be able to get this experience because you're starting to see the confidence of some of the several players and it, it's showing, right? And yeah. um, that's what you need when you're building depth and you're building out your roster to make changes coming into um, some important yeah. months coming up. So Lisa, yeah. for, for you, I'm going to go a little different. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm asking Lori about maybe some of the changes and, and the players who got rotated in. But in this match, when you saw the starting lineup drop, there were some familiar names on it as well. And we've heard a lot about Vlaco talking about there's a specific group of players that I want to continue mm-hmm. to see, get more time together. And we're seeing these names 
come out time and time again, really from November to now, quite frankly, whether it's been in training camps or for rosters uh, or game day rosters. And we're seeing players like Sophia Smith, Katerina Macario, Mallory Pugh, throwing in Rose Lavelle here in this one as well. Tell me yeah. about the players that got the start again, a second consecutive start. I think you can definitely throw Rose Lavelle into that front attacking line that Vlach Wendonovsky wants to see. Of course, it's it's the front three between Mallory Pugh, Katerina Macario, and Sophia Smith that he was alluding to after the last Uzbekistan match, saying that this is a trio that any chance they get to play together, he wants to put them on the pitch together. Uh, those are the three that he wants to see a lot of um, – building of relationships and partnerships and having Macario be in that front line along with Pew and Smith, how they work together, how they problem solve, how they move in and out of line. So I'm not at all surprised that we saw those front three again. Um, and Andy Sullivan and Rose Lavelle in the midfield. I liked seeing both of them as well get the start tonight. Um, I'm, I'm not that surprised with kind of how we saw this and also Alana Cook in the back line getting another start. Emily Fox as well. These are players Players that haven't had that many caps. I mean, Mallory Pugh and, and Rose Lavelle and Andy Sullivan, a little bit of a different story. But between Alana Cook, Emily Fox, Sophia Smith, and Kat Macario, these are players that are still looking to get a lot of experience that – Black Wendonovsky is using uh, these April windows and, and the windows to come in June for the last two matches before World Cup qualifying to evaluate these players and say, yeah. are you – are you one of the players that I want to take with me to the yep. world cup? Because that's really what he is looking at. And that's how he is evaluating these players. Yep. I do have to say the combination between Ashley Sanchez and Rose Lavelle, Laura, you and I had talked about this, these two <laughs> players together in the midfield. Hoo, 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 I want to talk about it. I want to talk yeah. about it, but um, I, I'm just so glad that we, could see consistency as well from these players. And and even looking at the first match between Smith, Macario, and Pew up top and this one, um, there was some familiarity. And you could see that in the way that they were playing tonight in their movements together and, and what they were doing. Um, whereas in the first match, there was a little bit of kinks they had to work out. There were still fireworks that came. Yeah. But I think tonight you saw a little bit of that familiarity and knowing that those pro players probably knew that they were also going to get this start in over the last few days leading up to this match. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 an important point that you bring up because we're talking about a two-game series against Uzbekistan, right? And whether it was during the United States Women's National Team Hour that we do in attacking third or whether it was me and Lisa chopping it up about this team, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of discussion about the fact that it's a two-game series against Uzbekistan, that it's going to – what type of challenges were there going to be within these two games? Because there's always the, the number that people fixate on, right? It's the number one ranked team going up against a uh, 48th or so ranked team. Uh, but within that, there were these layers, right? These undercutting layers where it's like, listen, it's a younger group of, uh, of players. Uh, Andonovsky is interested in expanding this player pool a bit. Let's get them these games. They had a She Believes Cup together. Now they're going into this window. And you're bringing up that timeline, Lisa, and it's getting a little shorter and shorter as we're getting yeah. to the summer for yeah. this July qualifier. So <laughs> the window of time for evaluations is is a little bit shorter than people probably anticipate. So when we're looking at games like these, and Lori, I'm going to go to you on this. When we have two consecutive back-to-back kind of lopsided blowout wins, what are these players actually learning from, <laughs> from games like these, right? Because if we're talking, if on one hand we're talking about, hey, we got to get some, uh, we got to expand the pool a little bit. We got to get some of these younger, uh, you know, players in here. Take a look at the talent that is in front of us. But you've been on the player side of things. When you go up against a, a team like this, what 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 does a player take out of? to lopsided games. Like. <laughs> yeah. Well, you take out of the experience of playing at an international level yeah. and that, that, and it means, it means something different than playing at club, right? There is a heightened awareness around it. You don't get as many games. It is, um, you know, um, special, an honor to be playing and representing your country. And, um, regardless of the score line, um, it is, it is a different challenge. And these are players, as Lisa just alluded to, are coming together. They don't play every single minute together outside of a few combination of players 
depending on what club team you play for. So it's about coming together and figuring out how you can continue to one for the U S be as dominant as possible, because that's what is expected. Right. Score goals, especially when you're talking about the front line that we have, mm -hmm. but then also build confidence because this is a, I mean, it's, it's the same conversation that we've all been having, but yep. it, it's a, it's a pertinent one because of where we are, right? It's a shortened window with Olympics being pushed back. World Cup qualifying is in no time, right? And actually in yep. the world and barring any wild thing, let's say the U S does qualify. The World Cup is like a little over a year. So it's like, golly, here yeah. we are. It, and like, is that's like no time at all. Right. And so you've got to get these players experience and get them feeling confident. And really that's what, because I don't think we're all under the guise of like, yeah. this was a great game. Right. No one was yeah. like, I yeah. mean, there was no goal in the first minute and it was like, oh, goodness gracious, here we go. And the, <laughs> and the game was wide open. So it didn't really ask many questions of these players, which I was kind of hoping for. Yeah. I was really hoping that Uzbekistan would have sat back and we would have forced some of these players to have to say, OK, show us what you can do, because we know when the games are wide open, you can score goals. You can yeah. take players on your relentless. There is like we've got some great players, but when there's different challenges thrown at you, how do you handle that? Because that will for sure be the case in qualifiers when every, everything is on the line, it, your heart and soul is out there trying to fight yes. to get into the world cup It's a whole different sure. ball game. Right. And you don't understand the intensity of it unless you've been there. I mean, you can kind of, you can grapple with it, right. And get yeah. it, but it is a whole different in terms of the heightened awareness of what you're trying to achieve gets a lot the environment changes a ton when you're and in that's why having yeah. veterans on this team yeah. and looking at that Kelly O'Hara, someone a player that has been in those World Cup qualifiers, yeah. been to the World Cup and can translate to some of the younger players that are earning their bridges first the gap pass. for sure. Yeah, exactly. It does bridge that gap, but there's only so much experience that you can translate via words and yeah. via, um, pictures or what, however they, these veterans yeah. want to do that and really close that gap. But it's getting these little bits of experience that they can, and whether it's starting a game and getting your first cap in Naomi Gurma and Aubrey Kingsbury, because there's pressure that comes with that and a little bit of jitters and intensity is stepping onto the pitch for the first time. And it's, yeah, go ahead, Laura. Well, uh, the only thing I'm saying, you bring up a great point because I, as you know, and we're going to talk about CONCACAF in general a little bit later, but when you think about the global game of women's soccer, it is growing rapidly. It's yeah. changing rapidly. And I, 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 listen, we've all said this before, and then we have like however many players, Mal Pugh is 23 and has like X amount <laughs> of caps, right? So like, I probably should like swallow my words of like, we're not going to see people get into the hundreds of caps anymore. Yeah, right. Shut up, Lori. However, <laughs> like, I think those times are changing, right? Like, be, we're going to see players younger and younger get caps, not have a ton of experience. We see it on the men's side all the time. I mean, like you see some of the best players in the world have like 15 caps and yeah. no one's talking about whether or not they have experience at the world cup. You just don't, but you have that from your club. Right. And so as the club teams become even more um, competitive and these players, it is these little games, regardless of your competition that give you that experience and get you prepared. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. I'm in agreement with with both those points. You're, I think we're all sort of maybe about to express the, the similar point, but in, in different ways. I mean, even like hearing out of these media availabilities, that was a big part of it when Andonovsky was talking about rotation specifically. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that that's part of it, that it's a part of getting players into a game day scenario. And that's what he was going to be looking for for somebody like an, an Aubrey Kingsbury, even if the, the scoreline might have looked a little different, that he tried to put things in perspective saying that it is incredibly hard for a goalkeeper to kind of come in cold and then all of a sudden maybe be ready for a, a one moment here or two moments here. That's incredibly difficult. And you want to stay, see like uh, your goalkeeper stay focused and uh, be able to direct traffic and stuff like that in the middle of the game. So when we're seeing these rotations in compared to the scoreline, uh, I like that we're seeing that lesson that knowing that there's that sort of game day experience that you can't, compared to anything else, like you said, with words compared to actual minutes. So I am appreciative of what 
we got to see overarching, I think, coming from She Believes Cup and then going into this mm-hmm. uh, international mm-hmm. window in, in April. Uh, because while maybe there are going to be some folks who say some things defensively, you know, what what did the team see off- offensively during the attack? We saw two different starts a little bit mm-hmm. in both of these games. You know, it took uh, this group, the trio that we keep referring to sp- specifically, <laughs> uh, nearly a half hour to kind of find mm-hmm. the back of the net in that first game. And then compared to this game tonight at Subaru Park, I mean, they were on the board within a minute. So we're talking about two completely different starts to two games against the the same team. So there's little things, I think, within it that we can kind of pull out and point out. And then obviously in the bigger picture of things, we got to talk about breakout individual performances. So I'm going to hit you both with this as well. So I want to know, give me one because we can point out. Several. Just give me one. Lisa, give me one player that you think had a really good breakout series. Okay, just one. (laughs) Uh, Tricky. I'm going to go Kat Macario. So sorry if I stole that one from you, Lori. No worries. I appreciate it. Uh, Katarina Macario is so fun to watch. She is a tremendous player. And we saw it in the first match against Uzbekistan and the play between Smith and Pugh and Macario and Macario being higher, not playing that false nine, but really stretching and getting into those gaps and sitting between Uzbekistan's back line and finding those pockets that she did so, so well at that. And then tonight, playing um, in front of Rose Lavelle and Ashley Sanchez, we saw something a little different from Katarina Macario, that she was able to solve those problems. Um, I mean, the set-piece goal from Katarina Macario. Are you kidding me? Okay, you're subbed off. Good job tonight. (laughs) (laughs) I had the pleasure of being right behind the goal when that happened, and my jaw was just drop yeah. I was like that is fantastic she also had a second one that she probably should have put away but uh we're, we're talking about the the praises Please. for Katarina Macario right now fantastic job by her and, and I think we saw growth from the first match until the second match and I'm also sad because we don't I don't personally get to watch her play week in and week out with Leon as we get to watch the NWSL players as much but this is a very special player in Katarina Macario. Um, Lori, I know I'm, I sure I took all of your points on Macario. No, no, no. I, I appreciate you. that. I mean, listen, we're both <laughs> crazy. And I, I, yeah. I, I back that up. And, you know, I think even just like looking at you specifically talking about the, the set pieces, just the, her approach and the way that she's like taking the free kicks, there's just something about her that is, we we haven't seen right like, like swagger I, times a hundred yeah and I just yeah confidence to step up and just like oh yeah this is this is the cat that everybody has been kind of waiting for because it's mm-hmm. taken you know you could say almost a year to see some of these things and granted she's young she needed some um some finding the best position and seems like she's she's really finding it in this this group um that she's playing along and gets it too my player uh, well, I'm having a hard time deciding between Sanchez and Mal Pugh, and I think I'm going to lean towards a little bit more of Mal Pugh, even though I wouldn't say it's a breakout performance, but I think this is the best soccer that we've seen Mal Pugh um, ever play. I, I think there was an interesting, interesting time for her early on when she was carefree and there was like, you know, a lot of yeah. people like super excited and she was super, super young, blasts onto the scene, goes to the um, 2019 World Cup and, you know, not a lot of expectations. And then we saw several injuries, right? I think some mental health stuff, yeah. um, rightfully so, mixed in there as well. And and now, I mean, we're seeing, it, it seems like she's having fun. It seems mm-hmm. like, th- I mean, she glides, she glides. I've uh, she glides around the field. Um, I think the decisions she's making, um, her, it seems again, the willingness to like, be like, I'm fine. I'll take players on her you know, yes. decision making that she's, she makes out there. And it's not just about scoring goals. It's about finding um, her teammates, setting her teammates up. So there seems to be an evolution of her game as well. And, and like, yeah, I really appreciate like her approach. She seems calm. You know, she seems calm in, in like on and off the field. You might know better on all of this, Sandra being in, in Chicago. Um, mm-hmm. But that's that's what it seems in Chicago. That's so what it yeah. seems like with the national team. And awesome for her because there has been some ups and downs that we all have known. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, so many great players. Sandra, I want to know you. you yeah. These games. I mean, out listen. To you and, and which players have you seen 
in both games throughout this series really be a impact player? Listen, I'm I love both those answers. I think you look at a player like Macario and you look at a player like Pew and you just sort of see their ability to impact a game. I'm pretty sure they combined for near <laughs> double digits. They had to combine 18 for, goals. <laughs> well, I mean, just these two players specifically, you know, yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Maybe, you know, maybe six, seven, you know, we'll have to go back and, and run yeah. the, the, the numbers, of course. But these two players uh, specifically also stood out to me as, as well. And, and just to piggyback off of Lori's comment on, on Pew, we're, we're seeing like that continued development. And I think we're maybe starting to connect those dots a little bit mm -hmm. for folks who are watching this team in this particular pool of players with what Adonofsky has been talking about in terms of trying to see more from, from certain players and seeing their, de their continued development. And we're seeing that out of somebody like Amal Pugh, mm -hmm. who's finally coming off of her first full regular season with Chicago Red Stars in NWSL. And it's, crazy to sort of think that this is a you know a player who's 23 years old and is uh, with her third nwsl club and making these strides at this age is that the people i think forget that she was very young when she was starting getting calls up call ups to the senior level national teams and then making the jump to go pro uh you know with with the spirit and then that very brief trade to uh <laughs> to formerly sky blue and then and then now chicago yeah. so it's like you Several had teams, in, and then like you mentioned off. like these injuries that came into play that hindered her time with uh the washington spirit and this was a, a spirit team that had rose lavelle andy sullivan you know the time uh and then we're starting to see that you know she learned what it was like to go through the long grind of a season but not only that really kind of be like the the face of a team, a central yes. focal person. And you can see that a lot uh, in her club play that uh, she has. Yes. She's, she's showing everybody what she could do on the pitch tactically and in front of goal in terms of a striker mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, but her evolution is sort of like a, uh, an on the pitch kind of leader. Um, someone who isn't afraid to kind of command a little bit more from yeah. her teammates or direct traffic. Uh, we're seeing that a lot more maybe on the, on the club level than, than perhaps the national team level, because it's a, it's a different beast when you're comparing uh, NWSL yeah. to the international stage. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the um, fact that she is so young and what, what was one of the stats tonight is Mallory Pugh getting the start 23 years yeah. old and the most caps or something like that. Yeah. Like crazy <laughs> stat Out of the group of the starting yeah. 11 group that was on that. that. <laughs> fantastic. I mean, that is so tremendous that they can have a 23 year old with the most caps in the starting 11. I also want to give a shout out to Rose Lavelle uh, because oh, yeah. this is another player that I think did really well throughout this yeah. series. I think tonight, she played a little better. Um, honestly, yeah. I really liked her alongside Ashley Sanchez. I really, yeah. really liked that pairing. I think Rose Lavelle um, did well tonight to command the midfield. And, and she's yeah. been so lethal on the ball with her vision and, and popping into those pockets and running at defenders and then feeding it off to Macario and Pew up top. There's, it was really yeah. fun to watch. Well, I'm with you hundred percent. I just, I just feel like, but we also know that about yes. Rose Lavelle, right? It's like, it's not, we're not looking at Rose Lavelle over, you know, the 2022 She Believes Cup and then these two games against Uzbekistan and saying, like, this is a player who had a breakout, you know, kind of performance. It's like we we sort of know, like, who Roosevelt is and what she's capable of. You especially, Lisa. I mean, you know, you saw yeah. her in college days, you know. So I'm looking at... I'm looking me at every the, time. Yeah, I was <laughs> looking at the Macarios. I was looking at the the Malpues a little bit. I was also looking at Sophia Smith. Mm -hmm. I think she's coming. She's walking away out of w these two games with, with a hat trick um, against Uzbekistan. And I know there's been this conversation about this. This is the young player who has to, who's, who's very dynamic on the ball, but has to sort of maybe learn how to finish. And we're seeing that in the challenge up. And now we're seeing that on the uh, national team stage. But I also love defense. I was happy to see Naomi Germa get a start mm -hmm. alongside Alana Cook. And I'm going to maybe circle Alana Cook for maybe my defender to sort of have a breakout performance. All of a sudden, she kind of found herself in the spotlight a little bit over mm -hmm. these last two games, uh, sort of seeing somebody like Atira Davidson now out for 2022 and having somebody like Abby Dahlkemper with – more caps defensively for this national team, but still kind of working her way back into form on the national team level. And all of a sudden you had Alana Cook 
being tasked with the responsibility of kind of leading a yes. back line. And mm -hmm. we saw her do that over these two games. And we also saw her getting involved on set pieces and in the attack. So I really liked these two games from Alana Cook as well. So there, I think there's a ton of players that you can look across this 23 and say that a number of them might have had some breakout games. But I like the ones that were kind of centered in now, whether it's a Macario, a Sanchez, a Pew, you know, or, or a Cook. And uh, we'll see. We're going to maybe talk a little bit about what's next, what's ahead, because there are going to be uh, some things that come after this April window for this United States women's national team. And we're going to talk about it after a quick break. They call me Tech God Willy Wonka. Up to my gobstoppers in secrets. And it's all true. I'm talking to someone from another planet. Do you know what this is? Do you know what this means? Go. Take him. Now. The world's been asking, who am I? All right, let's talk about it. What is going to come next for this national team? We talked a little bit about players who we thought had breakout performances, players who we thought had really strong performances. Uh, when we talk about somebody like a Rose Lavelle, we talked about it in our previews, Lisa. We said we want to see this sort of budding chemistry with Lavelle Macario specifically <clears throat> and see more of that. And I think we've gotten to see a bit more of that over this two game series. So when we're maybe looking ahead to this June window, uh, there haven't been any games that have been announced, but it's pretty safe to say that this is likely the last round of matches that this national team will have together before they continue their preparations for CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers in July. So for each of you, I'm going to ask, what do you want to see next for this team in June? Well, first of all, I'd like to shout out um, Kirsty B with the Pew essay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to read the comments? That's yeah, funny. I love the comments. I love the comments so much. And, you know, also, Gabriel, because this kind of lends to what you were just asking about, if you try to beat Spain, which is the strongest team in the world, that is up for, it's subjective, right? I, I'm no doubt. Are they one of the best? Um, yeah. um, but you need a, a score like Morgan, Morgan, Bri uh, Morgan, Brian. Um, she's not even a person anymore. It's Morgan. Utrecht. Um, Alex Morgan. Uh, Lori is listen, so I think now. it's late. It's late. Everybody I should be I drinking during this. Um, <laughs> I, I want to see somebody that's going to challenge. I want to see mm -hmm. these, these younger players, um, have to, break teams down because yeah. I think, you know, I, I, I think we could all sit here and say like, we, we love the NWSL. It's fun. It's exciting. It's transitional, but it doesn't always ask so many questions tactically of teams because yeah. it can get spread out. Right. And then you can start to use more athleticism to when the game starts to um, become wide open and it doesn't force you to always have to, necessarily think the game, just break teams down in a different way. And then when we typically see that have to happen, there are some breakdowns, right? And we have seen that. And again, this is just the evolution of our women's national team. We've seen that be a struggle for the U.S. national team as well, when there's teams that sit defensively. And I'm not saying in CONCACAF come world qualifying time that teams will necessarily sit back. But yeah they're going to be sophisticated in terms of the soccer and, and the way that they move the ball. And there's going to be, there's going to be challenges presented to the U S team that they're going to have to get through that looked very different than these two games against Uzbekistan and even some of the games in the she believes cup. And that is really the questions I think we all have. What does this look like when things aren't necessarily going this team's way, when there isn't a much space for Mal Pugh to start running at this back line or Rose Lavelle, because as high on Rose as I am, that hasn't always been the best game for her when things are really tight and there's not a lot of space for her to um, be able to run because there's misplaced um, final passes. We don't circulate the ball all the time that well. That's why there's been a talk about who's going to um, play in that six role. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Especially when you have a, a Sam Ewis out, a Lindsay Horan that didn't dress tonight. So to me, there's still a lot of questions. Um, 
but I would like to see a team that's going to present um, somewhat of like what Czech Republic did, which mm -hmm. was really robust defensively yeah. and could get themselves forward. Wasn't the most lethal in terms of the attack that anybody's ever seen, but they were really well organized. They were fit and they didn't allow a lot of space. So it positional play becomes a big question. Um, how do you create space for yourself? Where do you free up players? What is the final pass? What is the delivery from out wide look like? Everything has to be that much sharper, right? So. Yes, I, I think we talked about this right at the top of this live that I agree. I wasn't, I, I was disappointed that Uzbekistan didn't sit back tonight in this match yeah. with the United States because it, I think it would have worked to Uzbekistan's favor to kind of just sit back and try to keep the ball in front of them and, and really play compact and defensive even within the last 30 yards of the field because that would have asked so many questions of the United States, especially with Lavelle and Sanchez both in that midfield to start the game and having Andy Sullivan in that uh, defensive six position. And those are the questions that we need to have answered come June, come the next FIFA window and the final, potentially final two matches uh, for the United States before the qualifiers. I mean, a question about like maybe a send off series, but I think that U.S. soccer would try to lump it into this June window as well before the qualifiers come. I have no insight. I'm just spitballing <laughs> here. Don't worry, people. We're spreading rumors here on Attack yeah, Dirt, but rumors. we like it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I honestly think that it would just be two more matches before the qualifiers this summer it's for this United States, and that's. There needs to be questions answered. So however they go about getting competition, I don't think there's a UEFA matches during that window. Like those yeah. could potentially open up some competition for the United States, but they need to figure out how to unlock a team that is very defensively organized because they're going to see that in CONCACAF. If watching yeah. these CONCACAF qualifiers over the last five days or so, there are teams that are good defensively and that can yeah, score sophisticated. goals. They and really that are. can problem solve in the attack and and provide much different and a variety of looks going to goal i mean mexico holy cow and i know we're gonna touch on some of those games that happened but those are the problems and the tests that the united states needs to be faced with especially if he's still evaluating pew macario and smith yeah. up top mm -hmm. i hear you i hear you both i mean i i think it it goes without saying that maybe for that round of june games that are going to come up that they like to maybe we would like to maybe see a different type of opposition presented to to the roster that that he names but i think that's what i'm fixated on when i'm looking ahead and what i want to see yeah. next i think what comes next is it's those june those june friendlies and then you you got the the qualifiers mm -hmm. and we got to start talking about integrating some of these veterans in that have been yeah. out of the mix that's yeah. what i want to see next mm -hmm. so i especially coming out of this she believes cup that they just had and then now these two friendlies against uzbekistan it was important to have these types of matches, a, a small mini tournament, right? And you got a pair of friendlies now to kind of hang your hat on a little bit. But even within this U Uzbekistan game, when I brought up the fact that, you know, the, the beginning of both of these matches kind of started very differently. You had a little bit of a longer time to kind of find the breakthrough and then an immediate breakthrough in that in that second game against Uzbekistan. And there were moments throughout the match where maybe I, I wanted to see some of these, these players who were having good games, but I wanted to see some of them maybe take, take the shot versus taking the extra pass, or if they were going to make that extra pass, make it a little bit quicker or make a different decision. So there were little, little moments where you would, where you would see, and you would say, I wonder what this would look like if there was a Morgan or a press or a mm -hmm. Heath involved in this, in this type of uh, attack. So I think that is also what I want to see come next. I want to see a different uh, look in terms of the opposition, but I also want to start seeing some of these more veteran players getting integrated with some of these other players who have yeah. had breakout games over these last mm -hmm. couple months, because eventually you're going to have to try to bridge that gap. And what we've seen, and you know, you can attest to this, Laurel, we've seen in the past from head coaches of this national team when it comes to big game moments or tournaments whether it's a qualifier event or literal olympics or literal world cup oftentimes you have coaches that lean back and look at their veterans and say okay i need you come on board getting the call up yeah well i'm, I'm looking to see that happening for for june as yeah. well uh, hopefully that happens in june before before they head off to mexico for qualifiers in uh in july uh because this, a lot of these players are starting to get their time in challenge cup and we'll probably have some time during the regular season when that kicks off at end of uh 
April. So I, I want to see, I'm in agreement with you both. I want to see a, a different type of opposition and I want to see the veterans start coming back into the fold a little bit. But yeah. Let's talk about CONCACAF. Okay. Because while we're looking ahead a little bit to June and saying this is, these are the wish lists, these are the things that we want to see. Eventually, once they get past that hump, they're going to be in CONCACAF W Championship World Cup qualifiers. And we'll give a little bit of congratulations in order because as we were doing this live, some of these games were mm -hmm. literally in action and wrapping up. So here are some quick congratulations to Mexico, Costa Rica, Jamaica, Panama, Haiti, Trinidad, and Tobago. They are going to be participating in the CONCACAF W qualifiers in July. So shout out to them. I, you know what? I just want to like, I just want to like express some joy a little bit about the fact that this competition, this competition even took place. Uh, qualifiers didn't look like this uh, mm -hmm. before. Um, the the governing body said, "Hey, we have to expand uh, games. We have to expand the format and in, in which all of the regions are able to participate and try to kind of build up Concacaf as a region as a whole, yeah. rather than toward instead of just yeah. like, you know, your kind of two your two big teams in, in USA and in Canada. And I love that there was the opportunity here to sort of have six groups." 30 teams uh, be able to kind of go head to head with two rounds of matches here uh, to fight for a place in, in the uh, W championship and where I guess maybe you could say that the real work will start to, to come into play for, for some of these CONCACAF nations who were participating in the qualifying round. When, when you guys are, are listening to those six teams as I'm throwing out the congratulations, uh, which, which of those teams are maybe you keeping an eye on uh, for, for the upcoming uh, tournament in the summer? Oh, I mean, a huge congrats to all of these teams. I'm going to answer your question in Mexico and come back to it in a second, because as you mentioned, Sandra, this is huge that all of these teams could even compete in, in these yeah. qualifying games, because some of these nations were playing in their first qualifying game. They were winning yeah. their first qualifying game and, and no, they didn't qualify for the W championship, which then qualifies you for the world cup in 2023. But this is a huge step forward for women's soccer and, and these nations to be getting funding and in CONCACAF to be growing the game. And for the United States, they are really the epitome of what soccer could be in CONCACAF. And it's starting to trickle down. And that is fantastic. That's what we need to see more of, that these nations getting this opportunity even to compete over the span of this window and play, get time together against another nation in qualifying matches. Um, now I will say Mexico, they were very fun to watch. I also think Jamaica was also a lot of fun to watch throughout these qualifiers. Uh, we touched on it a little bit before that these teams are, are good. They can break down opponents and they can have a variety of attack in the front line and, and they can present different Oppo different opponents with different uh, decisions that they need to make defensively about how to do that. Um, uh, watching these games, especially between Mexico, I'm going to say they can score off set pieces and run of play and down the middle and sending crosses in. And that's very, very impressive to watch. Uh, th this was fun. This CONCACAF qualifiers was really fun to watch. Um, and a lot of the games I watched in full, I watched a lot of highlights though. And those are <laughs> great to see too, because you get to see all of the goals because there were a lot of goals and a lot of the different breakdowns and man, mm -hmm. some of these goalies, they are ruthless. They are Look. tough as nails. I got to give it to the goalies. It's, time, to the goalies it's time for the, it's time for the plug. Cause you mentioned it. Cause if you didn't get to watch all these <laughs> games, cause there was a lot of them, you know, where you could watch them, you can watch them on Paramount plus, or you can go to our YouTube channel and watch the highlights. we got some nice highlight packages for you, with all these games, Lori, I got to ask you with, with, with your experience <clears throat> in terms of this CONCACAF championship, that's going to be coming up in July and the process that has unfolded for teams to make their way there. Like what, what does it mean to you to sort of see the, 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 the this sort of the, this format kind of expand a little bit? And uh, what are you looking forward to this summer on the USWNT side of things or for other uh, national teams? Yeah. Well, I'm glad we're on video because people can now see my smile because what we're talking <laughs> about is resources, right? Yeah. Um, and that is, that is so important and it has always been important. And that's one of the things about, you know, the U S women's national team also is built on 
we leave this team and this game better than what we found it. Right. Yeah. And that means globally. And, um, and just to see, I mean, let's not forget Jamaica, the struggles that they went to when they qualified mm-hmm. for the 2019 world cup just to get there. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then, but then you're also like talking about like the U S who's flying over there being paid. Right. And, and no doubt no one's um, going against the resources that the U S have had. I'm just saying, you see the discrepancy, what that looks like. And regardless, I always say, regardless of um, whether you like social media or not, I, I love it in this situation because even in, like yeah. thinking about 2015, right. When Thailand first qualifies, they're wearing yeah. the hammy down um, of the yeah. men's team. Yeah. And, but like that needs to be highlighted because though the discrepancy in the resources need to be highlighted because you would not see that on the men's side. And so that's what this means to me. It um, makes me a little emotional because I think it's freaking fabulous. And yeah. the, to see a lot of these players, not everyone in these, but like, you know, we talked to off air about Bunny Shaw, her playing mm-hmm. over in Europe, um, um, Liga MX women all right. Yeah. Like you're seeing these players, um, play at a professional level each week. And yeah. that means the elevation of the game, which is amazing. And yeah. Quite honestly, Concacaf is about to blow up, in my opinion. It is going to be yeah. difficult. It's going to be awesome. And I'll tell you this, um, Lisa, we talked about this with when Jill Lloyden was on um, U.S. Women's National Team Hour a couple weeks ago or mm-hmm. whatever. I lost track of time. <laughs> um, but like, we, like Jill and I were part of the team. Like, this is going to be awesome. And I'm like putting yeah. – I put Mexico up there because Good. we lost to Mexico um, down in Mexico yeah, and World Cup Qualifiers that. in 2010, and yeah. it was a – packed house right and it was like the 12th person the 12th player because that stadium was a rock and abby's getting st- like staples in her head in the middle of the game <laughs> yeah it was wild they were played their hearts out they were yeah. also awesome in that game we weren't but we were also shell-shocked right and, and, and there's so many things we didn't visit this about of the experience of these younger players and being yep. in that type of environment and that type mm-hmm. of game that is just cutthroat. And, and I'll tell you online. one thing that we haven't talked a lot about is gamesmanship. And that will mm-hmm. no about no doubt when I talk about sophistication, that will play a huge part leading yeah. up to that game. We didn't go to the stadium. We didn't know what it was like. Typically you train on the stadium the night before yeah. the day before we did not We show up into this rowdy ass stadium. It was yeah, amazing yeah. looking back. I mean, fortunately, like we were like the last team in to the world cup and then we were the last team out because we ended up losing to Japan. But however, I mean, so the best and worst times ever, um, uh, it was like, yeah, Cancun. We need to do a trip. whole episode of just Lori down memory lane. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Fantastic. Um, I love it. But those are all the things, right, that are going to take place. And the World Cup qualifier is going to start looking way different. Yeah. And it is going to be a lot um, comparable to the men's and what that looks like, you know, yeah. in terms of like how challenging it is to play mm-hmm. against certain teams, what that looks like. I mean, countries are there's the belief that has been the separation yeah right for a long time resources and, and belief and that gap closes totally different ball game which I is know, so exciting which is so exciting because it just mm-hmm. elevates everybody right and that's goes back to the whole full thing about like anyway I just went on this law about you know getting experience i went on this long tangent i, I know the last it. thing is mexico's my pick deanna D- ordonez <laughs> uva player i'm pumped about her we haven't seen a ton of time with her in north carolina I am excited to see what she can do with Mexico. Um, and I hope she gets some more time with North Carolina um, in her rookie season yeah. to see what that looks yeah. like. Um, I do too. Well. I would love to see it. She she scored back to back right off the bench in, in some of these games with, with Mexico. I love it. Listen, I, I, I guess we're going to go three for three here. I mean, I can't choose against the motherland, you know. <laughs> I know. I was going to say, Sandra, give I'm us the Mexico plug. I'm going to go with with Mexico. Of course, I'm excited to see them, uh, you know, and, and we're talking about the story arc of, of some And their uniform. Are great. And the uniforms are great. The uniforms are great. We're talking about the, the story arc of some of these teams here, whether it's like the reggae girls in Jamaica and what they did in, in 2019. And, and now they're going to get another shot to, to qualify once more in, in the summer. And we have a Mexico side that kind of still has been carrying the agony of that failure to qualify in, in 2019. So this is going to be uh, it's going to be thrilling uh, to watch. I'm very, very excited. It's a it's a very it's a very important time in, in CONCACAF on the, on the uh, mm-hmm. non-men's side of the game. And uh, I am looking forward uh, to continuing watching its, its involvement and its development. And uh, I'm sure we're going to be talking about it more in the near future. So I can't wait for us to get together and talk about it again once more. And hopefully maybe we'll do it in the live and all of our friends can come and join us again. Yes. We I love the chat. Everyone we, joining us in the chat. Great. 
conversation. <laughs> thank appreciate you appreciate y'all. Y'all, I, I love it. Uh, thank you all for, for hanging out with <laughs> us. We appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you for, for listening to us and in our, in our ramblings or agreeing with us or disagreeing with us or whichever. But thank you for being here. Please follow us on Twitter and now on TikTok and Instagram at Attacking Third for more. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere you listen to your podcast shows. We're also available as videos. Subscribe to us. Visit YouTube.com slash Attacking Third. And we'll be back because Challenge Cup is back. So Lisa and I are going to be back with you with some more Challenge Cup and NWSL previews and recaps. So for tonight, for Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Lori Lindsay, this was Attacking Third. <laughs>